Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Fish Talk. Uh, before we start, I want to wish everyone a uh, uh, happy Christmas. So it's uh, the 20th of December today, um, so it's pretty close. So enjoy all the time with your family. Obviously, um, it's going to be a bit different this year. In the UK, you can't. You can only mix uh, with three households on Christmas Day. Um, so yeah, I hope everyone enjoys it. So today we're going to be doing another DIY video. Um, it is a backlight for your aquarium. I don't know if you've seen ADA um, backlights and the light brown backlight. It's basically like a panel behind the aquarium that's lit and it makes the aquarium look so much better. But they're really expensive. Um, we're going to be doing it on the 30 centimeter cube. Um, so I think the light brown 30 centimeter cube light panel is 150 pounds. So I'm going to try to do it myself. I have already done a previous video. I deleted it um, about making one. Basically, I've already made it, uh, and it didn't work out very well. It was a lot of effort. This is all soldered. It took me a long time. Um, and what happened was, this is. I'd rather tell you this so you don't make this mistake. So there was a lot of patches. To so see where the wires are here, where they join. Um, you had a lot of patch when you put the lights on and you put the screen on top. You'd have loads of different patches. So I went back to the drawing board and I thought, right, okay. So I ordered these. Um, I couldn't seem to find these in the UK, so I ordered these off AliExpress. And they came pretty quickly for her. And um, they're again RGB, but they can fold. So I don't think we'll have to solder anything. But the benefit is you can fold it really tight. You can do like 90 degree uh, bends or full um, 180s. So I think this would be loads better than soldering. And it'll be easier if, you know, if you're not used to soldering. You still have to do a little bit of soldering. Um, but if you're not fully clued up on it, this will be an easier way. So before we build the a light uh, ground, that's what we're going to call it. It's going to show you a few things that you might need. So, number one, I'll, I'll tell you about the perspex. Obviously, this looks a bit minging now because I've already done it um, and restarted. So, this is uh, at the back, 5mm perspex, um, and then at the side, 5mm perspex. So this is 300 mil squared here, so 30 centimeters. And then on the sides, the reason why I've gone so quite deep is because, now let's say the LEDs are stuck here and the panel is uh, 10 centimeters from the LED, you're just gonna see loads of little, like the, the actual light, the diodes, you're gonna see loads of them, all the chips. So you're not going to get even light distribution. So I think 30 mil is going to be it. Plus it fits the controls in here. It's going to give uh, good light distribution. So this is called light opal. It's like um, a special perspex designed for to use with lighting. So yeah, you want a, a light opal panel for the front. You can use wood for the size, but I'd rather use Perspex and a back. Um, Perspex is dear at the moment because obviously everyone uses them for spray shield, uh, sneeze shields and stuff. So this was forty pounds. That's quite a lot. Um, <clears throat> but again, it's going to be a lot cheaper than buying it done. Next up uh, is your LEDs. So you can have this white and then, um, if you want, but I've just gone for RGB so you can change the colour. You can use normal ones, but as you saw, I really wouldn't recommend it. it it's a lot of work. Oh, we're going to try these um, bendable LEDs. I'd probably recommend these. They were quite cheap from AliExpress, five pounds each thing, five meters. And then next, we've got two Wi-Fi controllers. Um, you don't have to have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You don't have to have two. So what you could have it so it's one single colour. So what the ADA light screen, it has blue at the bottom 
and white at the top. Um, so that's what I'm going to kind of simulate. Uh, these LED strips are 12 volt. The ones before were 5 volt. So they did plug into USB before. What I'm going to do is just, um, I've got uh, another plug. I'm just going to cut these and solder them into um, a trans 12 volt transformer. Next, we need a drill to drill the hole here for the outlet for the plugs. Need a solder and iron. You'll need some cable snips, these are fancy wire strippers, you, obviously it's just, this is easy for me to strip the wire, you do need a bit of cable, um, solder, and then just a hot glue gun, hot glue gun, uh, I didn't check this solder, yeah. wire strippers, right so let's, um, let's get started. So firstly, we're going to do the bottom row. So we're going to plug these into the controller. Bend them round, try to get as much LEDs um, as you can in, because yeah, it might cost a little bit more, but honestly, it'll look, it'll look better. You'll be annoyed if you do it all, and then um, it works out that you need some more. Also, I've stuck these at the bottom. Make sure these the controllers are at the bottom. Um, if they're at the top, you'll see it through the scale. When you're at the scale, you'll see two little black boxes at the top. Obviously, this is at the bottom, you won't see it because of the substrate. So we're just going to stick these down, hopefully it ends up in the right position. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to bend it, sorry it's probably hard to see on camera. loads easier guys honestly. I'll try to show you close up. So in the strip you have um, like a little worthy cut out there and you literally just fold them over and press down with your fingers and let it fold just like that. Simple. So much easier than cutting and soldering. I don't know why I didn't, I didn't uh, think of this before, but no oh well. There we go, let's bend in that one. It's a bit, little bit fiddly, but again, so is soldering those. And the load is easier, so for me to solder all of them lights probably took me. Uh, for three hours maybe. guys so we finished the bottom bang um, we're gonna do the top half now so we need to um, feed a wire from there all the way up there without um, seeing it basically when the panels on so my idea is is to I've cut the end of the LED strip off where the wire connects the LED and basically I'm gonna get four lots of cable, thin cable. I'm gonna thread it up where the 
LED isn't. So see there, it's where the connection is there. Uh, let me just zoom in there to show you. So if you see there, it's gonna be threaded all the way up there like that. You can see it's either side of the LEDs. Then I'm just gonna hot glue gun that down. Right, if you don't know how to solder, I'm gonna show you that now. Also, you might need some heat shrink. So I've stripped both ends of my wire. I'm gonna turn my iron on to heat it up. So firstly, I slide the heat shrink over the end. And then all I do is, if I get my first wire, kind of cross it over slightly. And just literally wrap the wires around each other. So it's like, like so. And then we get the iron. We push a bit of solder onto the iron until it starts flowing like it is now. And literally all we do is push the solder over the connection. There you go, that's soldered. Simple as that guys, super easy. So we have to repeat that four times. Right guys, so um, this is the a heat gun. You can use a lighter to heat these up. I just find sometimes the lighter burns it. Obviously make sure the heat shrinks are covering the, um, the wire. Just heat them up. There you go, so then I'm just gonna put them in here now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna glue the cables into its first position. So if you can, uh, you can't really, sorry, it's really hard to work and uh, so let me just lift that up. So I just glued that there. I've gone a bit OTT with the glue there, really. It wasn't coming out. Um, but literally this substrate is probably gonna be to there anyway, so. Just waiting for the glue to go off. So it just takes a few seconds to hold so to keep pressure on it. Don't burn your fingers, because I did it and it really hurts. <laughs> um, my thumb's healed now, but it was black. Look, there's a blister from it. Sorry if you can hear voices in the background. All right, okay, so now we're gonna send the wires up here like so. Uh, so, literally you can see here, um, so you can see here, well, I'll zoom in a second when it's dry, um, I'm also doing a rescape on my little tank. I know you guys on YouTube haven't seen it. Um, it was annoying. I made a video about it 
um, and it, the file corrupted. I'll probably do before I take it down like uh, what I did. Um, the whole reason of this little 30 centimeter cube tank was to kind of test myself. Yeah, as you can see there now. So I'm gonna go all the way up there like that in, in that one track. So yeah, it was kind of to test myself in different styles. Like, so that was, this is uh, what I've done at the moment is diorama. So it's, um, it's a, it's a carpet of Hemianthus Cuma and Monte Carlo. I've grown them before. Um, the sand path going up the middle. And then either side is Fissidens. Uh, I've never kept that moss before. Really cool moss. Loads of character. So now I'm going to try like a Brazilian style aquascape. Um, with, um, I don't know if you've seen the, this plant called Eucalaris. It's a carpet and plant. It's actually a carnivorous plant. It actually feeds off microorganisms in the tank. Um, it's known to be really difficult to keep. And I just kind of want to test, test myself a little bit. I mean, that's a hot, that's a, for me, if, if you're a newbie or you just get into the hobby, a lot of people go straight for the big tanks. It's exactly what I did. Uh, I started on like um, 80, 90 litres. Not, not massive, but guys, just start on a 30, 30 litre tank or something because it's so cheap to do. Like all the soil's cheap, the rocks are cheap. Oh, it's just it's just loads easier. So I definitely recommend doing that. So yeah, we're just gluing it on all the way up. <laughs> right, so just last few things. Yeah, try to get as thin as cable as you can. So like I've used speaker cable. So obviously it's not so visible um, to the naked eye. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder it onto here. So I'm roughly We're gonna go here. And then solder. So that's like uh, the setting off. It's gonna be quite difficult to do this bend. Um, I was, obviously, I wanna try to get e even spread. Oh, I wish we could do them in a little bit more. It's just too hard now. We're trying to. I'm nowhere George Farmer with the tutorials. <laughs> Right, okay, so that's kind of going off now. Right, so we've got a plan of how we're going to do this. So I'm thinking, flip it upside down like that. There you go. That's all done now. Um, we're gonna glue this up obviously in a bit when we make sure they work. So yeah, LED overload. So what I'm gonna do now is cut these together and um, solder it into one power cable. Come on guys, it's the day after 
uh, the previous clip. So, um, as I said to you last time, is I was connecting a power block and I was hoping it was going to work. Um, it didn't work. So basically, um, I'll explain how you calculate what um, transformer you need. So you look at the manufacturer specification of where you bought the LEDs from. Um, for me, this said um, it uses six watts per meter. So this is 300 mil long. So I literally did 300 times by 22 because there's 22 of these and that equaled uh, 39 watts. Um, I just had one of these transformers lying around. This is rated up to 60 watts. So now it works a treat. Um, the controllers are Wi-Fi. So let me just turn the lights on for you. This is definitely the way to go with Bender by LEDs. No patchiness. Right, so here's the light on now. Probably doesn't pick it up on camera. Let me just stand it up. So it'll be faced this way like this. Just lower the tripod down. Um, and you'll be able to see it better. Okay, so you can, this has two controllers, you can group it all, so they're all one setting. Or you can do individual. So the ADA look is uh, wide at the wide at the top, um, the bottom. Sorry, and blue at the top, like that. So if when you put the perspex panel on it. A bit too bright on, on camera, I think, to pick it up. Let me just try to change the exposure. See on the screen, it looks a bit patchy. Let's try to turn the brightness down a bit. Let me turn them both down to 50%. Just going to fit the panel now. Um, you have to be really quick because the glue goes off really fast. Have it as quick as you can. Also, as neat as you can. There we go. If you have any issues or you need any further assistance with making one of these, uh, then please comment below. Or if you're interested in me actually making you one, then again, please comment below. Um, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see some more DIY builds, um, comment down below what you'd like me to do. <coughs> um, I'm definitely up for doing some more DIY videos and if you are on Instagram uh, follow me at fishtalk so thank you guys for watching I'll see you next time